Mexico. Come on, Africans! Ah, what's up ladies and gentlemen how what's how you doing african fight fam it's your boy jb and i'm back at it again with another interview and today i am tag teaming with my boy yagi all the way from houston yagi what's up so what's up what's up yeah and uh today we have a guest a very special one just recently made his pro debut he is a taekwondo maestro, represented Nigeria in a couple of events, has a couple of medals, uh, currently training out of Sanford MMA down in Florida. It's Florida, yeah? Great. And yeah, that's none other than our brother, Adamu Isa. Adamu, welcome to the show, my brother. Thank you for having me, guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's really it's really a big deal uh, for us over here at the African Fighters. We really appreciate it. We do understand that you're fasting. It's Ramadan. And uh, yeah, well, it's just an interview. You fought in Ramadan, so this wouldn't be a big deal for you. Uh, so uh, without, <laughs> without any further ado, I'm just going to get straight into it. Um, I'm not going to try to take too much of your time, but could you just briefly let our audience wow. know about yourself? Where were you born? Where did you grow up? And uh, yeah, pretty much, pretty much that. So um, basically, um, I'm 25 years old right now, and um, I was born in Nigeria, um, Borno State, Medjugorje. Um, that's where I was born and raised up until I was 18 years old. So I turned 18 years old in a couple of months, and. I made one of the biggest decisions of my life that um, honestly, I'm glad I did move into America by myself. I know it sounds a little bit crazy, but I'm here to tell you that it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. It was crazy. It was lonely. Not knowing that I have anybody. Not, nobody, not anything related, but you know, I risk and I moved to America at the age of 18 that was six years ago all right and here we are you know yeah yeah so can we can we just quickly talk about your background in uh taekwondo is is it uh in your Instagram bio it did say that you won a medal at the Commonwealth Games I presume representing Nigeria how did that journey start for you to get into combat sports and taekwondo in particular so, um, obviously, that's kind of like a long story. That's our entire chapter, but um, I will do my best to answer as much as I can. Um, obviously, I started martial arts. I started Taekwondo as a kid. I would say around like 10. Um, you know, after I lost my father at a very young age and things got lonely for me, you know. So, got in a survival mood. I was getting in trouble on the street and... You know, being a little guy is always tough out there on the street of Nigeria. You know, I've always got in trouble. Try my best to protect myself, but it's never always well, end of well for me. So I wanted to learn something, a set of skills, maybe martial art, karate. You know, so I got into hunting and I find a taekwondo, not knowing what it is. I just know it's some Chinese stuff. Some things I can learn to defend myself. And um, I made this amazing portion. That was my first coach. And, you know, um, obviously he got to know a lot about me and my situation. He wanted to be more than just a coach and a mentor, more like a father, you know, who was taking care of me and helping me, teaching me, making sure I go to school, you know, playing a whole father role for me, you know, that changes everything uh, so, sorry to cut you off so, uh but w was this in borno or was this in kano or somewhere else that was no that was in medugui oh in that was in borno state medugui okay. and um, yeah in the same time same time um there was a lot of crazy stuff going on you know with the boko haram that's exactly when it started in 2009 i watched everything in my eyes monitor everything i went through everything with it you know um but that's how I started, um, not knowing it would end up being my way out and not knowing it would change my life. 
I just want to get in and learn a self-defense so I can defend myself on the street. So I don't have to come home with a black eye all the time. But, you know, I learned so much in the martial art knowing it's not just about fighting on the street. This is just a whole way of life. You know, I learned how to be a man, how to be a good human being inside and outside the martial art. And, and that's just it, man. Okay. That was how everything started. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, j- yeah, so just quickly, can you just uh, tell us how you got to represent Nigeria? Did you have to win, like, a national tournament or something? I know Yagi has no, a question, um, but I'm so, just after this. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean down the road, down the road. You know, um, I was, I was, I was lucky, and I have people around me that believe in me, and um, I have, I have a gift as a kid. I learned pretty quick, and it's just, you know, there people see. Want to So I was able to make a Nigerian national team. A cadet national team at the young age, what, around like 14. And a year later on, I was able to jump in the junior and compete for Nigeria. And so since 14 to 15, around 15, I was already national team member for Nigeria. You know, I made a national team, junior, went to a competition, you know, international competition. And everything, you know, was going pretty good. And a year later, I... 16, you know, everything just fall into place. I won senior nationals. I was able to compete as senior national. I won senior nationals. And that's when the Nigeria national team started to invest, you know, and just represent, you know. And a year later, that's when I won a Commonwealth. Yeah, I won a Commonwealth in Scotland, Scotland, Edinburgh representing Nigeria, that was the biggest moment of my life. And, you know, that put a lot of things into perspective. That was huge. All right, all right. Cheers, man. Uh, Yagi, uh, you want to come in here? Yeah, for sure. Um, So you mentioned at 18, you took a leap of faith and you came to the United States without knowing anybody or just a leap of faith. And at a young age, that's a very ballsy move. So how were you able to navigate your way? And you say you're 24, 25 right now. From then till now, how were you able to navigate your way? I mean, you know, like I said, I've in my life, I've always had people coming into my life around me, you know, that are unexpected. Like mm-hmm. come into my life and just support me and play a parent in a parent role. And it's just, you know. It's just some of the things that you just, you don't plan that. And it's just, you know, it's unexpected. So I, I moved here and when I, I didn't know, when I say I didn't know anybody, yeah, absolutely. Like when I say I didn't know anybody, I don't have any family member, you know, mm-hmm. but before I came here, I have a plan. Mm-hmm. I had a plan and I know exactly what I want. And I knew that if I come here and the plan is to come and train at the highest level and get a sort of a sort of stuff that I was lacking, so I can be able to do better at the highest level. Mm-hmm. So I came here working. I was working with the USA Olympic coaches, and you know, helping me and figure out what next for me. And yeah, that's how I I was working. I was teaching martial art. I was, you know, making some money. I did everything right and get a, a immigration paperwork and everything right, residency and. And yeah, man, one step at a time. What I say is easy, it wasn't, but you know, yeah. All right. So all right. works out. All right. Oh yeah, you go ahead. Yeah, you go ahead. You, yeah. You got one so more? the moment you came in, I'm sure you saw like MME started getting big in for the Nigerians at least. I think Kamaru came in maybe five years, and Easy came in three years ago. So you saw guys like you who came from the same situation as you coming in and doing big things to MMA. And you started as a kickboxer. So when did that switch turn? Like, hey, these guys are like real. They can do this. So let me let me switch from kickboxing to MMA. Or are you still doing both? Right now, so like, you know, my background is, you know, the little taekwondo that I did. Mm-hmm. And, but you know, I've always been an athlete. I was playing soccer back home and doing all of that. But 
Um, you know, I've, I've, I know myself very well, and I knew if I wanted to learn something, I would learn. And if I also wanted to do something, that I would do it when I put, when I put a time in it. But I never thought I would do MMA or just get involved in it. But being a martial art my whole life, fighting is all I know. You know, I didn't go to, I, I went to school, but I didn't have a college degree. I, you know, I went to school at some point. Mm-hmm. So obviously if there's any set of skills that I have is fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, but three years down when I moved here, I was still focusing on my Taekwondo career. You know, I mm-hmm. was just then, you know, I don't know where and things happen. I had people that come into my life and, you know, where the reason where they were the reason why I start thinking maybe I should do martial art and you know, okay. one okay. day and out of nowhere, and I decided to do it. All right. Speaking about MMA, uh, a lot of people compare your style after your pro debut. They compare your style to someone like Easy, the last Albender, because you you fight very long. You you use a lot of kicks. You stay you stay mostly outside the pocket, and you've got a very good takedown defense as well. So it kind of looks very very similar to Easy as we've always seen him do. So would you say that Easy? Was somebody you were building your 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 fight style uh to, towards yeah you're, you're shaping yourself to look to, to to towards that type of fight style or is there anybody else that you looked up to basically? Actually, that's kind of crazy. Um, that's um that's kind of that's that's a good question. Not crazy because you know obviously, I told you what if there's one question that I get every single day, mm-hmm. if there's one thing that I get every single day is this. I'm telling you, like, honestly, I've been getting this like a year ago, a couple years ago. No, it's not from a gym. A team member, a, 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 um, a teammate, a teammate will mention during the practice, oh, you move like, you move like easy. Oh, you move. And, and, and what's funny is that I don't move like easy in my head. Me, I'm just being me. But when I sit down and watch, this is one of the first time ever I ever sit down and watch my fight tip. When I sit down and watch my fight tape and I was just smiling, I was that's crazy. All right, now I see, I see the I see why people keep asking why people are saying this. And you know, I used to think that people say, Oh, you fight like when you do this kick, when you do this, it's just like easy or whatever. I I never thought I just feel like people just want to do people are just doing too much because because I'm Nigerian mm-hmm. and they like to do that comparison, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I just never took it like that. I just People always want to compare, but I never trained to be like him. I don't know. I know, and I, I, I truly believe I could be better than Easy. I, I truly believe I know a set of my skills, and I know what I can do. Mm-hmm. Um, I need a little time. You know, it's a process, it's a journey. But would Easy inspired me? Yes, absolutely. Easy inspired me. You know, he actually inspired me. He does. You know, okay. obviously you watch these guys. They were from where I came from. Mm-hmm. And I can see myself in these guys. Mm-hmm. You know, I can see myself in these guys' emotion. I can see. I knew. I felt what they felt. When I fight, I felt what these guys felt. You know, because I know where we came from. I know what we stand for. And it's just... It's just that one push, that one drive that we have in common. All right. Um, you... I just, I, sorry. sorry to cut you off. I, I just need to finish this point. So, um, do you actually look up? Is there a particular fighter that you kind of like look up to? His obviously, I know you have mentors like uh, Robbie Lawler. Uh, down in Sanford, there are a lot of uh, old heads there that you obviously uh, learn from. But is there anybody that you kind of look, watch him move, watch him fight that you kind of look like? Huh, this is the guy that I want to build my my fight style around. Have you ever like co- consciously thought about that, or you just take it as it is? You just fight as it is. I have guys that I watch that I like stuff about them, and then I just watch them. I want to learn things. Um, but honestly, like, because when I'm doing this style stylistically, when I look in me, I have people that I like as a fighter. I have fighters that I like, and I like their style as a fighter. I like what they do in the rings, and 
I am amazed by their style and everything they do. But then when I think of, I want to fight like them, I want to look at my body. I want to look at my body size, my weight category, right? I want to look at, because, you know, some things that work for Khabib might not work for me. Might not work for me because, you know, we're different body style, diff, you know, different range and different skill set. But I've, I've learned things. And if there's one guy that I say pretty much a fighting style, I really, I really take a look at his fighting style and I learn from him. And I, I ask him, I talk to him, I ask him how he do stuff. And, and then, you know, I watch his tape and I, and I learn how he moves. He's a guy from my gym, Martin. Okay. Martin, I don't know if you know Martin. He fight at the he fight in the uh one championship. Yeah. Martin Ingrian. Yeah, Ingrian. He's from yeah. Australia, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh that's somebody that I really, really look up to. Mm -hmm. Um doing his own stuff. I like his style and uh, I like his boxing. I like how he blend things. I like his fearless, like you know, his fighting yeah. strategies. I would say his fighting strategy is what I'm, what I learn. I personally, when I fight, I'm visualizing Martin fight strategy. Mm -hmm. When things get hard, when things get tough, or when I want to be far, when I want to be close, when I want to stay in the fight, or when I want to play the game, you know? Mm -hmm. that, that's, that, that's the, if I say that's the one guy I really, really look up to. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you know, he's like also a former champion too. So yeah, that's a good, yeah. good person to look at. Yeah. Yagi, you go. I, I like how he fights. All right. Okay. So one question I was gonna ask you, and just from hearing you talk, I can kind of decipher the kind of guy you are. Like, you respect the legends, but you want your own pants. So I'll uh, actually this. So you see guys like Kamaru, pound for pound number one, easy, yeah. middleweight champion. Um, so Dick Yusuf is ranked featherweight. Nganu, heavyweight champion. Do you see that as pressure for someone like you? Where maybe you walk yeah. into the gym and guys are like, oh my God, this Nigerian. It's it's Nigerian. Do you see it as... <laughs> no. Do you see it as, I, um, honestly, I'll be better than these guys? No, I don't see I don't see a pressure because I know like, see, I have, you know... I have a lot of ex experience through life and through the sports as a fighter. So I learned a lot of things not to do and a lot of things to do and a lot how how a lot of how the way I should be thinking. Mm -hmm. Um I don't see it as a pass uh, as a pressure. These guys have their journey and mm -hmm. successful, massive successful journey. And I it's just it's always I look at these guys, I'm like, damn, you know. It just tells me everything I need to know. I can absolutely do it. I can see myself in these guys. I could do the same dish, no question, you know. But, you know, walking in the gym, obviously it brought a little attention. But, you know, one thing is people don't care if you're from this, from sim, mm -hmm. you know. They also want to believe, like, they want to see they want to see you doing stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to actually see you. If they if they can trust, they believe, oh, they can believe this guy is work hard or something, then, mm -hmm. yeah, you might deal with a little bit of pressure. People will be like, oh, this guy can be good. This guy can be good, you know. But I try to not look at that and not let any of that get into my head. And I know what that type of stuff do, you know. Mm -hmm. These guys have their journey. I'm nothing. I'm, I'm just here, just like everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure this shit out, you know. I'm trying mm -hmm. to figure it out my own. Obviously, these guys have their career. Kamago have his career. He's going to have his career. Ngannou have their own. They're living their life, you know. They got, it's their own belt. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're from Nigeria, but that's their own belt. That's their own success. I can look at these guys and do whatever I want with it. I can be inspired. Or I can sit here and think that, because I'm Nigerian, that means I'm mm -hmm. just going to go to UFC and win the goal. No, I'm going to have to do the work. I'm going to have to sit and do whatever it takes, you know. But, yeah, absolutely. 
Okay. So uh, you got Sanford MMA. Go ahead. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go. You go. You go. Then I take the next okay. one. You got Sanford MMA, and that's a gym with. It's like a melting pot of talent, all divisions. You guys have. I see. I see Henry's IG stories, like in the morning, and I see the training room, like it's crowded. So, what's the best thing about being at Sanford? And what's kind of you, how long have you been there now? Well, less than a year. Less than a year. So what's the best thing about training in such a place where there's a melting pot? There's a lot of bantam weights you can train with. And there are also some bigger bodies you can train with too. What's the best thing about being out there? I'm telling you, the best thing about being in Sanford is the energy. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I've never been in a gym where I feel like, where I feel like, Wow, the energy is just amazing, you know, like everybody have, you know, everybody is very open hearted, you know, everybody is willing to help. Everybody have just just there to be a team, 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 teammate, team member, you know, helping each other. And just, man, I'm telling you, the good way to put it is the energy. The energy out there is unreal. From coaches to athletes. You can see where well, as soon as you walk in, you can see that we're all trying to help each other. Mm -hmm. It's no competition. And not saying there's no easy one. Again, we push each other, we help each other, but I'm telling you, we got each other at the same time. All right. Uh, all right. Uh champ, uh, well, we I do know that because me and you personally, we do exchange DMs. I do know that a lot it's of true. folks have been you've you've always wanted to make your pro debut almost a year ago now. A lot of folks have been turning down the, the opportunity to fight you. Some people might accept and then cancel. I understand it was a bit hard for you to get your first fight. Now that you've got in your first fight, how quickly do you want to get back in there? Um, we went back with me and my team. We want to stay busy, but also we want to do the right thing. So, you know, like, we are staying busy. Um, honestly, especially like this year, I don't feel like I'm... I'm kind of behind the schedule or something. No, I always believe everybody journey is different. So like, um, yeah, we're trying to stay busy, man. Probably every couple months. If I can get a couple or three, five before end of the year, I will be happy, man. Um, because we want to take every opportunity that comes in our hand, you know. Just, right. but I think right now it shouldn't be hard for me to get a fight. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, going into that fight, your last fight, you were a very, very heavy favorite. And uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people out there would want to take away your shine. I know that your name is Adamu Isa, but uh, me personally, I don't know what your nickname is. Should we give you one now? Or do you have one in the working? <laughs> huh. Why not? Honestly, there's just, there's, it's N.A. There's no nickname and... It's it's on here, but trust me, when we get to the bigger league, they'll find a name. Oh, no, we want absolutely. To, we want to give you a name here. We want to give you a name here, Yagi. <laughs> Yagi, you want to help me out? You want to help me out here? <laughs> uh, hey, Adam Ditamin. How about how, how, well, well, I have one. I have one. How about El Kanemi Warrior? El Kanemi Warrior. <laughs> He's yeah, because like, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it, he is from Borno mm -hmm. and Borno, you know, you know El Canemi yeah, Warriors. Yeah, yeah. El Canemi Warriors. I think that's a football team from Borno. It's, so, it's the football team, El Canemi Warriors. Yeah, so they are the football team. They're the well, I think I think a lot of English folks yeah, will not yeah. understand will not understand what that means. But uh, well, that's that's just something you can think about. Anyways, uh, Yagi, mm -hmm. you've got another question you want to ask. Um, maybe the last question I'll ask you is, I know you've talked about your goal, your long-term goal, right? And everyone has to have like a long-term, short-term. I'm guessing you want to be in the UFC, right? So you're one and all as a pro fighter now. Tell me that journey. How do you think that journey is going to go? Do you think you're going to be like, okay, five and all, then you get to UFC contract? Because the Bantamway is a hot division. Or are you looking at maybe taking the contender series route or even tough? Like, tell me how you see yourself and when do you think you're going to be making a UFC debut? I know, to be honest, but all I know is it's not going to take me that long. Um, 
but I, I'm at the same time, I'm not rushing. I'm not rushing. I'm going to get there. That's one thing for sure. Um, I'm not worried about this, guys. It depends on who is there when I get there, who is there, who is not there. Mm-hmm. But the one thing I knew is for sure that I have a destiny there, and no matter. I'm already trying. I'm training for this, guys. Now I'm not training for. I'm not training for the guys I'm fighting, but that don't mean that I look over him. No, mm-hmm. I don't care. Any opening that I'm fighting, I'm gonna. I have respect for them. I'm gonna stay focused and I'm gonna fight him like I'm fighting the number one contender in the US. Mm-hmm. No matter what this skill say, you know, this is no matter what this skill say, we're in a fight. I'm gonna respect them like I'm fighting number one contender. But in my journey to UFC is when we feel like when my team feel like I'm ready, we can get to the UFC anytime mm-hmm. we want when we're ready. You know, like, we don't want to just get to the UFC and say we get to the UFC, you know. We want to get to the UFC and actually get what we want to get in the UFC, right? We don't just want to say, hey, all right, we're in the UFC and that's the goal. No. The goal is not to get to the UFC. The goal is to go to the UFC and win it all. Yeah. Take everything yeah. away from these guys. Honestly, you know, that's just the goal. So um, working with the professional guys with that have a lot of experience my job is to stay humble and show and work as hard as I can because I'm telling you, man, I'm willing to do whatever it takes for this. And mm-hmm. it's, it's no question. I'm in here. I'm in here for there's no plan B, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's just how I see it. And all right. But, um. Yeah. So one yeah. last question. One last question from from me. Um. So uh, I don't know. I don't. I, obviously, you don't know the president of. Uh, Kamaru Usman Fight Club, fan club, is Yagi sitting over here. There's mm-hmm. nobody that loves Kamaru Usman like Yagi. And Kamaru, uh, Yagi loves a very good Kamaru Usman story. You are training at Stanford. Obviously, you've been Nigerian. And we've seen Kamaru Usman go down there. He even helped Gilbert Burns train for Chimaev recently. You obviously have run into him a couple of times. So, um, and I think one time on your Instagram, I saw... I saw you uh, wearing some, uh, showing up, so, showing some branded Kamaru Usman items that he probably dropped at the gym or something. I wasn't, I'm, I'm not too sure about what that yeah. was. So, so what happened is that when Kamaru Usman come to the gym, he try to help as much as he can. You know, he's just like, there's a lot of guys out there. He bring stuff, training equipment, and you know, I'm, I'm one of them, especially. You know, like, I've, you know, he gave me some. I've, I've got some equipment from him. You know. Very um, very good guy. Very his 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 way too legit in person. Like he's way likable in person that you think he is. Trust me. And um, he came in there and he just helped everybody and assist and help with even with training. You know, help me. Hey, fix this, fix that, and so nice. yeah, nice, absolutely. All right. Uh, well, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Adam Uisa, for, for honoring this invite. I think we've taken too much of your time. You should go start getting prepared for Iftar. That, uh, Yagi, if you don't know what that means, he's going to go break his fast. So, uh, Adamu, uh, how can people reach you? What are your socials? Um, I mean, I have an Instagram and then I have a Facebook. My Facebook is Adamu Isa and my Instagram is Adamu Isa underscore NG. So all right. I will appreciate every support, guys. And then you guys don't understand how much this meant to me. Like I know it seems like taking my time. It's not taking my time. I appreciate, you know, okay. having me here. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I and just uh, followed you. <laughs> I just followed you now on IG. So, so. all right. Oh, we we just no go one, one, we'll yeah. just go one, one minute. And um Adam, if you don't mind, please just a quick chip plug. Just be like, yo guys, this is Adam Isa, and uh, you're watching the African fighters. If you don't mind, please, thank you. Absolutely. Hi guys, this is Abu Bakr Adam Isa, and you're watching the African Fighters channel. That's number one in the game. So make sure you go out there, subscribe, and stay tuned. There's a lot more on the way coming, man. Thank you. Don't thank sleep you. on us. Yeah, yeah, guys, you heard it. Don't sleep on us. And that was Adamu Isa. Uh, first time we have him here on the African Fighters. And shout out to Yagi for also helping me out with this interview. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we out, the African Fighters. Come on, Africans! Thank you, guys. Peace.